We're in a place called Harwich, which is the south east coast of um, the United Kingdom. And we're going to look at a thing called Beacon Hill Fort, uh, which was set up in the um, Tudor days, but adapted as it went along into um, the defence of England should the Germans attack in the 1940s. Right, let's go and have a look and see what's left here. This is possibly a part of a um, tank trap, anti-tank trap, looking at it. it it's leading towards the, um, the fort area, so I'm assuming that was at once, uh, maybe one over there at one point, but obviously it's been broken through now as it's, uh, it's uh, a place where you can walk around. I'm not exactly sure what this building is, to be honest with you. I don't have much information on it. Uh, let's have a look inside. I'm not exactly sure, it doesn't lead to anywhere to be honest with you. It could have been, if them trees weren't there, it could have been some kind of observation post, low observation post for the radar. Some of the early known um, defences in this area was built around about 1543 by uh, the reigning king at that time, is Henry VIII. Um, they were called device forts because normally um, on the coastland, the, the normal like coastal, if you want to class them as that, uh, would usually defend this area. But I think Henry VIII was a bit worried about um, the Spanish and um, and the French armadas attacking it. So he ended up putting his own, his hand in his own pocket. <laughs> He's probably using our own money really, and building these forts along this uh, this coastline. Ten years after that, the uh, they were I think the threat of the um, the French armada dissipated and uh, they became abandoned but in 1588 when they thought and we thought that the um, the Spanish were going to invade then they basically refortified them by 1625 and the um, uh, realized that the Spanish Armada weren't going to invade us or weren't going to get through here then basically this area was um, was abandoned now the blockhouses that were initially here uh, have all apparently have all gone through basic coastal course, course erosion more than anything else. In 1803, there was a, a, a the Harwich Barracks were uh, were set up, and it was run by the West Essex Regiment and the Royal Buckingham Militaria. In 1810, they set up five 24 pounder uh, guns here, uh, in order to back up the uh, the there's a redoubt over there, the Harwich Redoubt and um, they were there to supplement that. By 1812 they put a, a, a further five in which made 10 24 pounder cannons. By 1822 this um, coastal battery was lost to erosion. They were going to rebuild it um, in 1839 but um, plants must have gone astray or whatever it were but they never rebuilt this area. The small one up the rear, it looks as though it's possible that it was some kind of observation post looking behind towards um, the town of Harwich, I think it is. The H frame good holding the roof up, obviously it's probably collapsed a little bit, but it's definitely split there anyway. And I know you can't see anything, but if them trees were all cut down, you'd be able to see over the estuary. The building you see over there, was the Harwich Radio Direction Finding Tower. Uh, was built round about April 1941. Has one of the earliest applications of RDF, which is a radio direction finding. Uh, 10 similar sites are built around the UK, covering important, important rivers, docks and harbours. Uh, later, the RDF became known as Radar, around 1943. It's an American term, but it's just short for radio detecting and ranging. As you can see, the uh, the tower's shut apparently. It's only open weekends, uh, just been informed. Uh, so you can actually get it, but unfortunately I'm here during the week. Um, this radar was set up to uh, watch for enemy shipping to come across the estuary between Essex and Sussex. 
and um, the idea is, is the radar would pick up any enemy ships um, then the signal would be sent to the extended defence officers uh, over I think it's Beacon Fort and Langer which is across the estuary and then they would decide what to do next now they had a series of mines laid down here across the estuary and I think uh, they were detonated electronically and they would detonate it if for instance a ship was trying to get in to this harbour um, and um, they could detonate them individually it seems to be anywhere so this radar station was obviously important for this area of uh, defending Sussex and Essex and especially the, uh, the harbour of Harwich I used to have this uh, radar, apparently there would be a big antenna on top of it and two men would swing it backward and forward until they got the correct signal, or the strongest signal I should say, something similar to a modern day satellite I'm assuming. Once they got the range and the distance and the burring, then they would send it on to the uh, extended defence officers uh, who would do the appropriate and next thing regarding either going the guns to fire at them or they may, if they have to do, then set the... Um, a series of mines that are laid underneath the water between this estuary and uh, detonate the appropriate mine to obviously um, disable the ship. One of the reasons why they're keeping this, um, this area, especially the radar tower, um, intact and trying to bring it back so people can walk around is because one of the early, very earliest radar detecting devices inside there. So they want to make sure that part of our history is still kept alive. Behind me is the um a battery set up in 1940 called the Cornwallis battery, um, named after the uh, Admiral of the Red, William Cornwallis. It had uh, twin barrelled, um, quick firing, rapid two pounder um, guns in here, and they were set up because there was a threat of um, Schnell boats or E boats from the German Navy, no doubt based in the Netherlands, coming across here and trying to get into this harbour and destroy, try and destroy the shipping. The bunker behind me, I think, is an extended defence officer's um, barrage, or bunker, I should say. And the idea was, is this is where they will get the information regarding um, detonating any mines in this area between, I think, uh, both of these breakwaters here. Uh, the information would come from the radar station and be relayed to the possibly this, looking at this uh, extended defence officer's um, bunker and then um, the officer in charge would uh, decide to do what next, whether he's actually going to get the, uh, these uh, quick firing guns to any Schnell boats or e-boats or if any shipping coming across trying to invade, especially in 1940, around about that, uh, around that time and then they could detonate um, whichever mine they wanted. These two quick firing six pounders were partially enclosed uh, in case mates, just in case they were actually bombed so it would give them some protection against um, enemy aircraft. I may be wrong but they look like a sort of a Type 25 pillbox, I'm probably wrong, they look very similar, circular, uh, they're not corrugated together, if they're corrugated together they've been made by a company called Armco but they have one, two, two embrasures, they've got some visual um, embrasures or, pill, uh, or um, uh, uh, loopholes up there, but I'm not actually sure, so it's difficult to say. This would be a, it looks like a fire control tower, yeah that's a way in. You've got uh, a step loophole there, and you've got the observation up there. And they're overlooking this area here. And where the breakwater is there, both sides. Then, um, I would say that's where the minefield would have been laid between this breakwater and there's one further over there. The loophole here, step loophole, and a small uh, low loophole down there, probably for a small arms, a small machine gun, uh, a rifle. And uh, there's the uh, observation post or fire control, possible. The battery's off limits when I visited and have been purchased by a private company for restoration. So I'll send up the drone and tell you some more history of the area. Fortifications can be traced back to the Harwich area from the 1500s when the then King of England, Henry VIII, visited the town in 1543. Three blockers were initially built on this promontory. 
Over the next 400 years, this fortification was upgraded to combat the threat from possible invasion from the French and Spanish Armadas. The Langard Fort on the opposite side of the estuary was the site of the last seaborne invasion of England by the Dutch in 1667, who were beaten back by the Royal Marines in their very first land battle. By the turn of the 20th century, concern had shifted from France, the Netherlands and Spain to Germany, and the battery's armament was the subject of several upgrades. In 1901, a further breech loading 6 inch or 150mm gun was added to the north of the battery. In 1903, the original guns were replaced with three of the latest breech loading 6 inch Mark 7 guns, but also retained the two old 4.7 inch guns. During the First World War, Harwich was an important destroyer base. Improvements to the battery included two quick firing one pounder pom pom or anti aircraft guns. The fort remained operational in the interwar period, although the 4.7 inch guns were finally removed. Plans to modernise the battery had not been started before the outbreak of the Second World War. In 1940, a new emplacement known as the Cornwallis Battery, named after the Admiral of the Red, Sir William Cornwallis, was constructed with two rapid firing 6 pounder 1000 great guns on a twin barrel mounting, intended to counter fast attack E boats or Schnell boats. The new battery includes a new magazine, shelters, and a prominent three story battery observation post. The 6 inch guns were partially enclosed by concrete casemates to protect the crews from air attack and an experimental range finding radar was installed in a new hexagonal tower. Ground defences were improved by the addition of pillboxes, trenches and searchlight emplacements. Overlooking the breakwater, a concrete blockhouse housed an extended defence officer's post from where naval officers could electrically de detonate sea mines in the estuary. The fort was finally decommissioned in 1956 on the dissolution of coastal batteries in the United Kingdom. In early 2018, part of the Beacon battery was bought by Paul Valentine and Barry Sharp as part of a restoration project. More information on the project and opening times can be found via the Beacon Hill Fort website, link in the description below. Well, I hope there's enough footage um, that I've taken about um, Beacon Hill Fort, the Cornwallis Battery and the Radar Tower uh, to give you some interest uh, if you live in England or if you're coming to visit in England, then you can come across here. But it looks as though it's only open Saturdays and Sundays at this present time, maybe open later. But um, it looks like an interesting fort and it was obviously an important uh, fortification for... Um, us at the beginning of uh, the, the Second World War. Anyway, thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you on the next video.